Mr. Turner of Ohio. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Kerry. Appreciate you being here. Um, I, I'll, I'll tell you up front, I voted against this program. <clears throat> I, I voted against this program because basically four reasons. One, I didn't believe there was a very good definition or focus on what the program was to do. You know, we were first told it was toxic assets. Now it has not been. Uh, two, I think there was a lack of understanding of the process, what happens after the monies are made available, that process. <clears throat> Third, I didn't think it addressed the practices that got us here to begin with. It didn't stop the practices that, that were occurring. And four, it was unclear as to where the money was needed and how much was needed. Now, you have been very forthcoming. I want to congratulate you on you're doing a very good job in, in answering our questions. But no one can still answer those four questions. I mean, we're now several billion dollars, hundred billion dollars into this, and, and we're still where we don't have a clear focus of what we're going to be doing with these funds. We're not certain as to what the process is going to be. We have not addressed at all any of the practices that got us in this place, and still you are unable to tell us how much money this is going to take. Now, I wanted to comment on one thing that you had said. <clears throat> uh, you had said, when someone asked you, how did we get in this, this situation, you said <clears throat> that Banks loaned borrowers money that they couldn't pay. Homeowners have responsibility and regulators have responsibility. Well, I want to tell you that I come from Ohio. Montgomery County, Ohio is, is the place where I live. It's in the center of my district. Um, and we have the foreclosure crisis, and we've had it for over a decade. Um, the, um, it's been about 27,000 foreclosures have occurred in my county since the six and a half years that I have, have been here in Congress of a county that has a population of around 500,000 unbelievable numbers of foreclosure. I believe that it's not just that banks loaned money to people who couldn't pay. I believe from the experience that we've seen in our county of people who've tried to address this issue, that it's actual structural issue. It's a leverage ratio that, that predatory lenders and subprime lenders were actually targeting homeowners and loaning them money that was in excess of the value of the home, which of course results structurally in a situation where when there's financial stress that you have to go to foreclosure. If you have no equity, you have no option other than to go to foreclosure. And the big banks initially would say, well, we're not really part of that, but, but they were. Because what was happening is, I believe, the structural aspect of loaning greater than the value of the, of the property, people didn't care because they were selling these things as securities on down the stream. So they didn't care if it was a workable loan or if the asset was overvalued because in the end they weren't going to get stuck in the musical chairs of, of these, these assets. Um, I think in the end when we get these evaluated, we're going to find that this is somewhat the largest theft in history that has occurred of people who overvalued assets, sold them down the stream, and then the American taxpayers are stepping in, unfortunately, um, with, uh, with, with their own dollars to try to make up the gap. Now here's my concern specifically about an, an issue that uh, was alluded to in the beginning of this discussion. Some of the monies that are being provided are, are going to appear to assist in transactions where the money is leaving the country. Now, I think, you know, everybody up here understands that there are, you know, international practices of, of the, the um, flows of capital, and that needs to happen for our economy to be, be successful also. Um, but the Fed chairman yesterday, Bernanke, stated this, to asking about the crisis itself. He says, in my view, However, it is impossible to understand this crisis without reference to the global imbalance in trade and capital flows that began in the latter half of the 1990s. Well, back to my concern about the practices haven't changed. One of my concerns is that the manner in which this is occurring does not have any protections or requirements that the dollars address the issues of, of our economy and that portions of, large portions of these dollars are, are leaving our economy. That would put us on the wrong side of the ledger and in the same types of practices that Branke just said are, are underlining this. We, we know that you can't, in, in providing dollars, stop international flows of capital. We don't want that. But I am concerned that what you're doing might facilitate or incent additional dollars leaving uh, our economy that are specifically intended to prop up our economy. Could you please comment? Sure, Congressman. Thank you. Um, I didn't catch all of Chairman Bernanke's remarks, but I believe he's referring to uh, there's many economists think that there's been a glut of savings around the world in developing countries, and it's been coming into our capital markets. So the, ca the cash has actually been flowing the opposite. It's been flowing to America, which has given us very low borrowing rates and encouraged us, some would say, to take on more debt, maybe more debt than we can afford. And so 
I think we have to be careful, especially right now. We want all the capital we can get to get through this crisis, and we need to let the global economy restabilize to a new equilibrium where savings and all of these things are balanced. So I take your point. I hear it. I, I agree with the spirit of it. I'm just offering a word of caution about saying let's stop money flowing in this one direction because it will end up stopping it coming back the way that we want it. Uh, the gentleman's time has expired, but I do, I, I do want to say uh, we're going to uh, have two more members to ask questions, and then we'll uh, take a brief recess. I also want to tell the, uh, the, the gentleman from Ohio uh, that uh, since you raised the question about Montgomery County and, and of course, Dayton, and since my own community in Cleveland uh, was the subject of a New York Times uh, magazine article uh, this past week, uh, we are going to go back to Ohio, and we'll come to, uh, to your community as well, uh, and maybe we can get the hearings on the same day in Cleveland and in Dayton. So I just want you to know that this, this committee is going to be going deeply into these affected areas. I, I thank the gentleman for raising the question, and 